So since most people don't like the blah blah before a video, here are five quick tips that I think you guys might find helpful when editing in DaVinci Resolve. The first one is going to be lowering your timeline resolution to 1080p. And it doesn't matter what camera that you shoot on, whether it's a GoPro, whether it's a smartphone, a DSLR that uh, partly shoots upwards of 5K. The thing is, if you lower your timeline resolution to 1080p, DaVinci Resolve and your computer have way more processing power to go through this footage without having a choppy playback and whatever. So I always set my timeline resolution to 1080p, but there's one thing that you should keep in mind if you wanna export your video in 4K, make sure to go into your project settings at the end, just before you're about to go to the render page and set your timeline resolution back to 4K. That means you have the flexibility to export your video in real 4K and not have to upscale it from 1080p. So that's tip number one, going on to tip number two, and that is enabling autosave. And you might be thinking, why should I enable autosave? I'm not working in Premiere Pro, that like crashes every five minutes, we're working inside of DaVinci Resolve. But trust me, DaVinci Resolve crashed on me a couple of times. It would have been very frustrating without autosave. The thing is, if Resolve crashes and you don't have autosave, on, chances are that you reopen Resolve and realize that the hours that you spend editing this project were completely worthless because it's all gone and you don't want that to happen. So enabling autosave can be a lifesaver. Trust me, try it out and you will thank me once Resolve crashes on you. So going on to tip number three and that is adding cinemascopes. Everything just looks so much better with Cinemascopes and everyone loves Cinemascopes. So there are a couple of different ways how we can add Cinemascopes to our footage. And like the beginner or the newcomer way might just be to crop your actual footage at the top and at the bottom. But that might be a horrible way because then you will quickly realize you cannot reframe your shot. Um, but you might need to. The second way is dragging in an adjustment clip and do the cropping on that specific adjustment clip. But then there's the other way, and that is so simple. Just go to timeline, scroll down until you see output blanking, and there you can choose between a couple of different aspect ratios that you can use. So going into tip number four, and this is gonna be a game changer if you're color grading on a small monitor. I have a 24 inch, which is still pretty small, but if you might be editing on a laptop, a 16 inch, 14 inch, 13 inch, whatever it might be, this will just change color grading forever for you. If you navigate to the color page and you left click on the curves and hold the left click down, then press P on your keyboard, you can actually adjust the luminance curves or the RGB curves whilst you're in the full screen viewer. So this way you just have such a great time color grading because you can actually see what you're doing in full screen. Now going into the fifth and last tip and that is copying grades. And if you're anything like me, you do color grading at the end of your project. But like when you've done everything else, when you've done your rough cut and you've done your fine cut, then I'm gonna go on to my color grading. And now I have to deal with like thousands of clips that I have to color grade. And then I usually just do the grade on the first clip. Then I'm gonna select the second clip in the clips tab. And then with the second clip selected, I'm just gonna middle click on the first clip that I actually graded. And this will copy over the whole grade and the whole note tree. And this will save you so much time. Now, keep in mind that when the lighting's changing in your scene, you have to do minor adjustments. Um, but you have the whole note tree laid out already. So this will save you a bunch of time, especially if you have a few shots that are filmed in the same room or the same scene. So that's a wrap guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe if you haven't already to not miss out on any upcoming content in the future, but also to help me spread out this video to more people that might be interested in that specific topic. But with that being said, guys, I hope you all have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.